My name is Madison Stewart, and I'll be your shark correspondent. Not every story I bring you will be doom and gloom, but for my very first, I thought it was necessary to bring you here. This is Australia. I was born here, raised here. This water is in my blood. This is where I struggle. This is where I thrive. This is home. But my home has a dark side. We have amazing beaches, pro surfers, and sun. But my community is infected with fear, brought about by a species we cannot control. It's led us to panic. And in our panic, we've made mistakes. A male surfer's been killed in a shark attack near Wedge Honestly, Island. Honestly, from these dramatic Perth. pictures that the Council says actually there has been no fatal attacks on a Gold Coast beach with shark control equipment. The shark use. nets along Gold Coast beaches are a comfort for nervous swimmers. And have said that it's about time that they do get rid of the nets. Australia is home to a shark control program, which claims to save lives by placing nets and baited hooks offshore to protect bathers. The first nets and drum lines were installed in 1962. Since then, every single day, people flock to beautiful beaches where just offshore, animals are killed at the hands of our own government. We are not the only country with shark nets, but we are leading the way in devastating our wildlife and ignoring all alternatives. And we are leading the way in fear. The nets sit on beaches anywhere from six to 12 meters deep, depending on the tide but the nets drop only two metres, leaving anything free to swim underneath them. A lot of what is caught is actually leaving the beach, heading back out to sea. But the government officials in charge of this program will tell you the aim of the nets is not to stop sharks from reaching swimmers, but to cull the local population and prevent them from creating a territory. Then there's a drum line, a long chain with a baited hook aiming to catch sharks. If a shark or a dolphin is caught in the net, they will cut it up and use it to bait the hooks. Because it's such a smart idea, we will stop sharks from attacking people by placing large chunks of food a few hundred metres from where people are splashing around. This is a document that lists all the animals that have been caught in a net that have been eaten by bigger sharks. Shark partly eaten by larger shark, disposed of at sea, bitten off behind pectoral, remained left on the hook as bait. Stomach of shark had been eaten. Shark had eaten tiger that had been hooked first. Bitten out where stomach Two sharks in net. Three were caught while feeding on dolphin. It's interesting to note that not every single shark that came to feed on the dead sharks in the nets was actually caught. It's pretty much proof that these things are chumming sharks to the beach. You can actually see when you're looking at the fatalities of animals in nets that entire pods of dolphins can hit the net at one time and just all be wiped out. I used to dive along the Gold Coast shark nets for years because I knew they were useless. They were designed in 1948, roughly, by someone that knew nothing about sharks and didn't care about the environment. It's very sad because the amount of animals those nets kill and the people that have anything to do with the nets are, are conditioned by the government never to put the word out. It's all another cover-up, another big cover-up. Dolphins, dugongs, so turtles, whales. But you never disagree Sorry? with the shark nets. Shark nets are wrong. They're the worst thing for environment to ever be put in water. When you go over the shark attack files for Queensland, ever since the nets have been put in, there have been bites at netted beaches. There's been more than 30 bites at beaches with shark nets on them. There's been no fatalities though. But one of the reasons this could be is because every beach with a shark net is also a patrolled beach. So any one of those bites at a netted beach could have easily turned into a fatality from blood loss if it wasn't for the fact that they are patrolled and the response time from paramedics to patrolled beaches is much quicker. About four years ago, I filmed a shark net for the first time with friend and conservationist Nicole McLaughlin. We did so with risk. Any individual or group of people caught removing bait or stealing drumline equipment could face the maximum penalty of $55,000. Yeah, I think I've got half 
the second half. Now, just before I go back, you would be dead. Your body and your head. And then you've got the number as well. In recent years, Nicole took over, frequently monitoring and filming the nets. Finally, after so long of trying to raise awareness and change the laws, she reached her threshold. On February 6, 2016, to get people and governments to listen, Nicole began a hunger strike. Um, no, I'm not scared. No, I, I mean... That's what worries me, is that you're not worried. <laughs> I wish you were scared. No, I'm, I'm not at all. I mean, it's, it's, it's having an incredible impact. I'm actually, um, yeah, pretty overwhelmed with, with, I, I guess the support, um, but more so the education that's getting out there to people, um, and and yeah, the awareness rising. I think you can you can tell it's pretty evident around the Gold Coast at the moment, at least, and, and Queensland in general, that people are starting to, to wake up to this issue, which is the best thing. And um, for as long as I can go um, on this campaign, I will. And yes. So this is day six of Nicole's hunger strike. Hello. How do you feel, Nicole? I'm feeling good. Yep, feeling like I can go for a lot longer. She looks really hungry, but we're all very proud of her. Sitting here in her little, um, she's got a little homeless set up here on the beach overlooking the drum lines, which is really nice. Yeah, it's been lovely. Fast person, and we were like, what? We take some ass and take a photo. Before that I had a, a big tub of um, chocolate chip and caramel ice cream and it was, um, yeah it was good, it was good. So you've gone six days without eating? Yep, except for in my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Over the past 52 years, the Queensland Shark Control Program has been responsible for killing 763 great white sharks. Great white sharks are protected by three laws, local and international. If found alive on the nets or drum lines, the fishermen paid to check them have permission to kill them. There is now a total of more than 360 drum lines and 30 shark nets deployed along the coast. The program in Queensland has captured approximately 78,000 marine animals since 1962. the famous baby dolphin shot which you actually filmed so tell me about that and how traumatic it was to actually be there um yeah that was a really hard day um so obviously keep keep between me and the baby, she was protecting the baby and keeping it on the surface for air and making sure she could stay there and um, and be with, with the baby and just the look in her eyes was something that I'll, I'll never ever forget. There is no question that we need to protect people that enter the water from the predators that hunt there. The real question is at what point do we let that desire for protection justify the decay of our wildlife? And will we sit back and let government make decisions on behalf of ignorance? Or will we begin to influence those decisions?
On the ninth day, Nicole was contacted by the Minister of Fisheries. They agreed to meet with her, pending a medical certificate to show that she was healthy. So on the tenth day, Nicole ended her hunger strike. Nicole is now within the system, continuing to talk to governments about alternatives. I don't want you to think activism is out of our reach, or reserved for a few. Activism is everywhere. It's pure and simple refusal to accept the society we live in. Wait till they take something from you. Till they put baited hooks in your backyard. Then you will know what activism means. <laughs>